Hello everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Uncle Chadis has a Thanksgiving and Black Friday deal for his Discord. I have it pinned in the comic section below, okay? You get $50 off your first month using the coupon code for the monthly plan, I love uncle. And you get 25% off the yearly deal using the coupon code year with uncle. And I'll leave the link in the, to join in the description below. Thank you guys so much for your support. Let's get into this unbiased technical analysis. Looking at the daily chart guys, the S&P 500 did a couple of bullish things it finally closed above that 400 level all right we have not been above the 400 level or closed above it since september 12th we've had some washes above it in these last couple of weeks but we have not been able to close above it until yesterday all right also we were able to break back out of this bear flag that i got here breakout to the upside the fed minutes report came out yesterday guys they're talking about possibly being less aggressive on their next rate hikes so the market does have a tendency to rally towards the end of the year keyword is tendency doesn't mean it's going to actually do it but it does have a tendency guys and with the feds talking about lowering heights this could serve as a catalyst however the market is expecting it now that's what we are, you know, what we're going to be pricing in is that the feds will be less aggressive. So if they don't become less aggressive, if they keep doing the rate heights at the, you know, 0.75, the market could be, you know, will obviously most likely react bearish. If they give us that 0.5 or lower, we're going to see some bullish reactions, okay? And that end of the year rally that the bulls been talking about could actually come to fruition, okay? That's just what... That's what, you know, I saw in, in the FOMC minutes. And the price action, it's kind of matching it. I mean, we look at the 15-minute um, chart here. I mentioned to the group to buy calls if we can clear 400. You know, first candle of the day, it opened at 399.5 and started the day clearing 400 and hit my 42.5 to 43 zone. Um, I was watching the 402.3 level. Uh, that was a previous uh, pivot high back in November 15th. But then as the day progressed, you know, I had to adapt my levels. And I was seeing some good action around the 4.2.5 to 4.3 zone. And I started watching that. You guys can see here, good level to level move. You know, if you're day trading from 400 all the way up to the 4.2.5 to 4.3 zone. Uh, I did have a level around 4.1.5 that I mentioned to you guys as well. We cleared it on the 15-minute chart, hit the next level, level to level. Had a false breakout right here, set up off that 4.1.5, bearish setup, but gave it a nice, gave us a nice level to level move. But it, um, you can see here on this 1, uh, 1245 candle that the, the, the price actually closed at 399.8, so it closed below my 400 level, but you can see on the next uh, well, not on the next one, but on the 115 candle, 400 was recaptured, giving us a false breakdown setup. You guys know how I love those setups. We just trade based on the setups, and it triggered a nice move, almost hitting that 403 level. Okay, that 403 level is pretty significant. Back on September 13th, that's where the start of the gap down is. September 13th high, around 403.10. We almost hit it. So that's a pretty critical resistance level to watch. All right, if we could clear that, we are inside that gap. Okay, that September 12th to September 13th gap possibly can test the 200-day moving average, which is around 4.05 now. It could drop a little lower to 4.5 to 4.5 zone by Monday, so uh, or Friday, excuse me. So pay attention to that on Friday. But if we clear that 200, we can fill the gap. The gap's around 4.8.5-ish, and maybe... We can test that bear market resistant trend line around 409 to 410 zone. Okay, I need to talk to you guys about that bear uh, bear market trend line because this this trend line you can see got one touch, two touch, three touch. Can we get that fourth touch? And and you know this bear this trend line this bear market trend line has kept spy in a downtrend. All right, since January. 
So obviously, if we break out of this trend line, that would be very bullish, guys. But remember uh, the AOLs that I mentioned to you guys. What is the AOL? The AOL is the area of liquidity, all right? Now, keep in mind, guys, there's going to be a lot of people watching this trend line just like, you know, me and you, all right? I'm talking maybe thousands of millions of people that are going to be watching this trend line. That means above this trend line, to me, in my opinion, is an area of liquidity possible. There's a bunch of stops up there, okay? There's going to be a lot of people watching that trend line with their stops set above that trend line, okay? Why? Because most people see that we've got a bunch of rejections from this trend line, so there's a possible chance that there will be a lot of retail traders is going to try to short from that trend line. Hey, if you're going to short from this, short from resistant, right? But a lot of, you know, we're trading in a manipulated market by the market makers. It's possible that's what they want us to think. They want us to short there. So that means there's going to be a lot of stop, a lot of uh, stop losses set above that trend line. They, if they get, if they close above that, this trend line, it's going to stop, take out a lot of these stop losses. Okay, so keep that in mind. It could happen if they give the breakout. It's gonna take out these stops. It's gonna take out the shorts because it's gonna look like a breakout. Now, if it does break out, we want to see follow through. All right, if it breaks above four nine four ten zone, we want to see follow through. One close above this trend line will not be enough. It could be a liquidity grab, and they can push it back down. Okay, that would be a false breakout setup if we get a false breakout setup around this trend line meaning it breaks above 49410 zone for on the daily chart and then the couple days or even a day later it breaks back below that is a false breakout setup and that would be very bearish i'm not saying that's going to happen i'm just saying if that does happen i want us to be prepared okay because there's a high chance that with so many people looking at this trend line, market makers are going to look to pull some tricks, okay? So just be careful if you plan on shorting from this resistant line. My thing is, I don't like to short direct from resistant. If it hits a resistant, I want to see it reject from the resistant and then take out a support level, giving us a false breakout setup. Does that make sense? So if we clear the 200-day moving average and it tests this trend line and then break back below the 200 day moving average i would that's a i would be bearish i would look for puts does that make sense okay now if it does clear this trend line and it continues to show follow through and it keeps pushing up that's very bullish guys trade it unbiasedly follow the price action trade it like a sheep and follow it like like you know let the price action be your shepherd all right now that's the bullish case scenario all right Holding this breakout of the bear flag, okay, supports around uh, 41.5 now with the next critical resistance at 403. Clearing 403 would trigger those upside targets that I've mentioned, okay, 403, 200 day moving average, this bear market trend line, all right, and if we clear that bear market trend line, it would be very bear, uh, bullish and put 411.6 and 413.8 in play, okay. Now, bearish case scenario is SPY rejects from 403, breaks back down 41.5, giving us a false, another false breakout of this bear flag. Break down that 400 level, the 61.8 fib level that I got. That would be very bearish, especially below 400. I would swing puts 398.5, 397, 395, uh, uh, 393 to 395. Uh, 393 to 393.5 zone in play, previous pivot low, all right? Uh, what's below that? Uh, and then, of course, 390, all right? Below 390, I would definitely continue to swing puts. And I would my ultimate target would be the support level of this bear flag, which is around 382.5-ish uh, now. Break down 382.5, breakdown of this bear flag would be extremely bearish, and I would definitely favor a multi-day or even a multi-week sell-off to the downside. Maybe 
even test a previous low, October low, or maybe give us a lower low. But none of that bearish stuff is going to happen unless it can start off taking out the first support level that it needs to take out, 41.5 and then 400. All right? So you guys got my levels. It's up to you guys to trade it unbiasedly. The Feds are sounding like they want to be less aggressive. It doesn't mean they will because the day the next FOMC comes, we'll see what happens. If they are, if they stick to their word and increase the rate 0.5 or something, maybe the market will react bullish and give us that end of the year rally. But if not, it could be very bearish. But either way, guys, gotta let know the levels, know the setups, and just trade it unbiasedly. Whatever the news says, we can use, we can track it. But when it comes to trading, we use the price action. All right, similar with triple Q. All right, Triple Q cleared some resistant levels. I mentioned you guys that 284.88 was very critical. It cleared it and it pushed up more upside going as high as 289.46 yesterday. All right, and I've been telling you guys about that 287.7 level. We got the close above. That's bullish. To be bearish, it, Triple Q needs to close back below 287.7. I have support at 286 and of course at 284 to 284.88 zone. Take out those support levels. Give us the false breakouts and Uncle Charters will switch back to being bearish on Triple Q. But as of right now, as long as my, remember, my sentiments are based on conditions. As long as above 287.7, we got higher price targets to play 290.7, 294-ish, 294.3-ish, maybe go as high as 297, eventually... Maybe we can go back 300 and 301.7, it, about 5, excuse me. Okay? That's the bullish case scenario, but it has to hold that 287.7 support level with 286 and 284.8, the lowest. Bear case scenario takes place. The bears take back control if the support levels fail. All right? Tesla, guys, I mentioned to you guys yesterday, we had that false... Breakdown setup on Tesla where it recaptured 169.5. And boy, oh boy, did it show follow through. If you watch the option flow for Tesla, I mentioned to you guys, I was seeing a lot of contracts that look like hedges. And it was usually bullish. And Tesla gave us this nice 10 plus dollar pop. All right. So with that being said, is that what it closed at one around 183.2. So I got support at 180, but the critical one is at 177. Okay, I mentioned you guys recapture 177. I'll be a lot more bullish. All right, and that's what happened. Gave us another false breakdown setup. As long as above 180 and 177, next critical uh, resistant is at uh, 190, uh, 193. Okay, that'll be a breakout of this down trend line of the green trend line. Okay, we got 185 first. 185, got to clear 185 and 190 first. But if we can clear those level, we can get to 193. We clear 193, that's a breakout of this green down trend line, okay? To be bearish again, it needs to get back below 177, okay? Keep it simple, guys. Now, let's end this with the option flow. Filter for 500K premiums above. And we see 68% in the puts. Big money still overall bearish. And, 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 and you know, this sweep order, over 7,000 in size, 380 strike price. Okay, this look like legit short positions. Sweep order, 2.4 million, over 5,000 size, 390 strike price. All right, both December 16th expiration date. Those look like legit short positions. Now, this is a split order, 2.1 million premium, 6,000 size, four, three, uh, calls for 4 3 strike price. Okay, split orders are not as aggressive. All right, I would take these puts more seriously. All right, but keep in mind, they got time on it. They don't have to... You know, they don't go as crazy over the, you know, the intraday movements like we do. Or at least like I do. Triple Q, overall bearish, 92%, okay? Now, this is very interesting. Sweep order, 6 million. However, it's very in the money, all right? It's very in the money. 610 strike price. This is, that's crazy. 4.8 million, okay? 610 strike price. Okay, look like hedges. Look like hedges. What are they hedging for? Okay, now this one right here, block order, 39.5 million, over 49,000 in size. Puts, 280 strike price. January 2023. That, that looks like a legit 
short position. Okay, because it's out the money. All right, it got they got time on it, and that's very that's a lot of money. Okay, so you guys can see big money is very bearish. You know, on triple Q, at least it look they look more bearish than bullish. And Tesla. Okay, so yeah, we're still seeing these these type of orders coming in on Tesla. Block orders, $45 million, 333 strike price, okay, very in the money, okay, $46 million, 300 strike price, very in the money, guys, it looked like hedges, looked like hedges, this could be bullish, all right, and the bullish momentum could continue, but let the price action guide you, all right, thank you guys so much for watching, peace.